peace. Amen. Okay? Staying afloat, you know, staying above. I'm speaking about that. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We need to, I, I would still want to say something about Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 and 2, which is very, very vital to us. Because what the devil uses is darkness. What God uses is light. And in his glory, there is fullness of light. Hello. There is darkness, there is light. For this reason, the Son of God was manifest, even to destroy what? The works of? The works of darkness. For this reason. So the Bible says, arise, shine, for your light has come. So, if there is any time a child of God is meant to arise, to overcome, is this time. Darkness will be threatening to cover the earth. And it is in many ways. Wars and rumors of wars. Pestilences. Dear brethren, the Lord has been warning. This is decayed. The enemy will try anything and everything. Even in this year. Is that to scare people? Is it that now we have become the prophets of doom? No. My friend, we need to understand things. Hmm? By understand, by knowledge, the rushes are delivered. Amen. You need the right knowledge. Amen. You need the knowledge that can deliver you from evil. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. For us to prevail in every evil day, we need to arise, shine, number one. Arise. How? How do I arise? <laughs> you arise by being conscious, first of all. Are you conscious of the times that we are living in? Why is God giving us a dream of darkness coming so suddenly and everybody is scared, confused, not, nobody knows what they, are, they should do? It's because he wants us to have a reason before that thing comes. Be conscious. Know about it. Know the days you are living in. Be aware. And now, arise when it is there's still time. Hello? You know, there are times and times. When you miss times, then you suffer. Arise when there's still day. Jesus said, I must work while it is still day. Because night is coming when nobody works. Did he mean just daybreak? No. He meant he must work while there is still light. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. While still light is needed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. While still there is a threat of darkness. Arise when there is still a threat. It is still a threat. It is still a, Okay, we still, we, there are lots of uh, darkness still. But it's not the level <laughs> that the Lord is quickening us about. Hello? There is a level and there is a level. Shataya Rabba Kokose. Dear brethren, we are in serious times. Okay? And the war is in the heavenlies. The war is on economy. The war that the enemy is using. The war, the war, the weapon that he will use. And God told us here on this altar that we have a grace period. Tell my people you have a grace period before things, especially the economy, is controlled. The next thing is that if you have not arisen at such a time and Asked God so many, uh, you know, inquired of the Lord. You, you've not put yourself in a position where you are the Joseph. God said it is just the season. In this season from 2023, it's just like when Joseph, you know, in Egypt, 
was, was, Pharaoh was given what? A dream. And he was told there are seven good years, seven bad years. So they needed to do something in the seven. In the seven. Our seven has been reducing. Are you getting what I mean? Yes. Am I alarming somebody? Somebody may be seated there, I'm a student. What does this have to do with me? God is not into that. God is a spirit and you are a spirit. A child can do a mighty thing now. Amen. Hello. Hello. It's just our positioning, our consciousness, our making decision because faith, God is not a respecter of man. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. And anyone who gets hold of faith, yeah, the Bible says they turned around, you know, they overthrew kingdoms. They stopped mouths of lions. They did mighty things because of faith. Somebody say, Lord, help my faith. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So when God spoke to me about uh, Joseph's season in 2021, I did not understand what's going on. But later on now, of course, everywhere on the internet, everybody is speaking about Joseph. Oh, we are living in a time that Joseph, some are on seed road, some are on this. Even, even Cindy Jacobs came here and said God has spoken to them about Joseph and the seasons we are living in. So, the Bible tells us usually, those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The thing we need to do now is that Lord help us to arise, to shine in time. Hallelujah. For why? And the glory for your light has come. Your light came. Your light has been around. Your light has been with you. Your light is here. Yeah. Who is your light? Jesus is the light of the whole world. Amen. You are carrying him inside you. Amen. You are walking with him everywhere. When you are going to face doors, you are with him. When you are facing challenges, he is inside. We do not leave him in church. You don't leave him here when you are leaving today. He is the light of the world. Light shines where? Light is needed where? Praise the name of Jesus. If there is a time we are supposed to be lights, this is the time. Jesus said we are also the light. Light should not be put under a bushel or under the table. Amen. A city on the hill cannot be hidden. Somebody declare I cannot be hidden any longer. My talents cannot be hidden any, hidden any longer. My graces cannot be hidden any longer. Every power that have been coming against my visibility. Visibility of what is inside me. Hindering what is inside me. Opposing my visibility. Opposing my light. In the name of Jesus. By this power in Jesus' name, I destroy you now. I cast you out now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't worry. It sounds crazy. We pray in between. We pray at the end. We pray anyway. <laughs> Jesus said, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Listen. We are talking about darkness that covers the earth. But the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. You see, it doesn't say we'll rise. It says it's already risen. It's already risen. It is you to do something about the glory. Let me tell you, there's a, there's a season I've seen. Thank God for these seasons of glory and us insisting on the glory. If there, is a, there are weeks I have seen glory, I have seen, you know, with glory, also we have physical things manifesting. Hello? Glory, God, God crowns his people with glory and honor. So glory and honor go together. If there are weeks I have seen honor, it is, it is this few weeks ago. Hello, I don't take it for granted. I know it's what God is doing. It's what God, what we have been declaring. That's why people feel compelled to honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, we were somewhere with, with Cynthia. You should have seen until I felt embarrassed. You know, there are some kind of honor 
you're not used to, you, you're like, hey, which one is this? I want to enter somewhere, almost hide myself. And then last week, where people are standing in the line to receive you? Hmm? Everybody, government, what, what, oh. Hey, I'm like introducing others to, yeah, so this is so on. I'm like, what happened here? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we are not wasting our times. It's just signs that God is showing us that this glory is real. This glory, when you become conscious, the way we are preaching it, we are speaking it, we are, man we are experiencing it. Because when we experience it, then now it manifests in the physical. Amen. Hey! Amen. So it's never in vain. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory has to do with wealth also. It has to do with financial blessings also. So God is shaping his people as they concentrate on knowing that they have the glory. Because the glory is upon us. I have concentrated, I have spoken about the glory for the past weeks. Isn't it so? Isn't it so? And I have told us to believe. To believe. Believe. We are not ordinary. It doesn't matter which village you come from. Hello. It's not where you come from. It is where he comes from. Hello. If I'm connected to him, it is where he comes from. That matters. I'm married. If I'm married, I'm telling you the truth. I don't leave home at home. You know, I don't stay in. You know, when women are married, it doesn't matter how poor their families were. I mean, their home. They can even be living in a grass-touched home. The ladies, they came from Nyumbayanya. But when she enters her husband's palace, hey, do you have any question, my friend? Are you going to tell her, go back to the village where you came from? No, this is her home now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we are married to one, yes. hey, whether a lady or a man, this is spiritual. We are married. Yeah. We are married and we moved. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. We are in our husband's home, my friend. Yeah. And where he comes from? Whoa! The streets are of gold. Where he comes from? Hey, angels are using their, you know, their, their wings. Wanakupepeta, my friend. You change. You go married. There are people who are not aware that they go married. That's the problem. You think village, of the village you come from? You may leave your husband's palace, Nigerian, to Nenda well. You'll be stopped. Unambio kuna maji kwa tap au kuona. Happy I yes, we can imagine. We are married. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So those who are married should live like they are married. So the first thing here is that arise. Amen. Be conscious. Amen. If you are conscious, I'm telling you, God will make steps. Amen. God will, one thing will lead to another. Amen. Be so conscious of the glory Amen. that the seasons in this season, what you need is his glory. Amen. Is his glory. Amen. Why the glory is yours? It's not like you are the one who brought the glory. Jesus is the owner of the glory. But listen, in the book of uh, uh, the word of God tells us that um, we, 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 when we are talking about the glory of God, uh, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, the Bible says, and one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his. So you are not looking for glory. The glory is already on the earth. But it has owners. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, you have been told who the owners are. So it's you to pick it up. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
you can walk in glory any moment. Glory of God is present. Anyway. Anyway. One S was if you. One S was if you. Yeah. You see, in his glory, there's healing. There's deliverance. There's restoration. There's everything you need. It is heaviness. It is his power. All his power is in it. The Bible says that he told uh, Moses, I will pass before you and you will see my back. But all my goodness will pass before you. Because in the glory of God, goodness, everything good, all good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, somebody, just get a bit of his goodness today. Please, to make a hivi, shetani ya metudanganya, anatuonyesha kwamba kuna kitu nzuri katika hii wakovu, apana! My husband owns everything. His father is rich. Hello? Just some of his goodness. Feel it. Know it. His healing is in his glory. It doesn't matter where. If you are conscious of his glory, it doesn't matter where. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. One time, I told you this testimony. A lady comes in. I was working in Nairobi Hospital. You see the hospital. Hospital is hospital. And in the hospital, uh, everything is, you know, different. The order is different. So we used to call patients in. Into the cubicles, ask them what their problem is. And you take a paper, you start writing, you do things, and then you examine the patient, you see where the problem is, where the pain is, to locate. Okay? So I called this lady into the cubicle. She's a daughter of uh, one of us, born again, in a different department. But she came to the hospital, and it was not the first time. There was a season. I was not the one taking care of her, but I saw her there. And this girl walks in, she was informed too, that time. And uh, so I closed the cubicle, and I started asking her what the problem is. She started saying, my legs have been swelling, my back has been in a lot of pain. I can't continue with my education from time to time. I fall into this problem. I don't understand. It has affected my education. I have to go home. My legs are swollen. I look at the legs. Yes, they are swollen. The back is in pain. So many things were happening. And so as she was talking to me and I was listening to her problems so that I can decide what kind of treatment, I, she was seated on her, on a couch, you know, inside the closed curtain. So as she was seated there, her legs hanging down and explaining to me, I decided, I felt in my heart, what level of nonsense is this? This girl, in my heart, I was thinking about this, and I'm like, ah. From time to time, she's falling back. Her education is affected. And she's, because what annoyed me most was, she's a daughter of a believer. So as she's talking to me. She doesn't know what's going on with me. She thinks I'm really keenly listening to all her woes. Yeah? This is painful. I indeed do this. I am in trouble. I, at one point, I switched off. And I started saying, what nonsense? What is this? This girl is born again. Mother is born again. We go to fellowship in the hospital together. The daughter is falling off always. I said, this cannot be. And you know what? I decided to sit on top of, with her on the couch. Instead of standing and taking and speaking. I, I went into the court. We all sat now. The legs down. I mean, hanging. We are seated. So I asked her, where is it? She said, it starts with the back here, and then it goes to the leg. I said, okay. So show me where the back. She didn't know what I was doing. I started remembering, what do I carry? Um, I should be conscious of it anywhere. I carry the glory of God. It's full in the earth. Amen. Jesus is the hope of glory. Amen. He's already inside. Amen. Hello. Amen. So as I sat there, I put my hand as if I'm examining her on her back like this. 
I wasn't saying anything and I was talking to her saying, so what happens? She kept talking. As she spoke, she stopped talking and she started shaking. She shook and started going down. So I moved from her, her legs up. I put her leg, she would put her leg up and she was on the bed shaking. And she started saying, thank you, Jesus. I wondered who told her. And she cried. The next cubicle, and all the cubicles, cubicles, you know, it's only curtains. Eh? Everybody, people are like, hey, whoever is in this next room today, what's going on? I'm telling you, she shook. She cried. She, she cried. She said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She was under the power of God. I left, I closed the cubicle. I left her there, and I said, next. And uh, I went to take her. I came back after a few minutes after settling another one. And when I came back, the lady was brilliant. She's telling me, I'm totally healed. No pain. That was the last. Amen. She got healed in a cubicle where we were supposed to be prescribing some things or, you know, deciding their treatment, uh, what, what machine to use, what, no. <laughs> The lady got healed. We didn't do anything. Well, of course, she paid the hospital. But <laughs> because it happened in the, in the cubicle. I wasn't paid. <laughs> but listen to me. She left her healed. She left very healed. And that was the end. And uh, I remember one of the ladies uh, who, uh, who worked there, she's born again, she told me, mm, I had it all. <laughs> there was a mighty visitation. <laughs> she said, I was in the next room. I said, thank God you are the one who was in the next <laughs> room. I said, others who know, understand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody is checking at this hospital, my friend, and I robbed the hospital. Is there a crusade here? Bwana asifiwe. Bwana yesu asifiwe. I want to encourage us that the earth, the whole earth, anywhere you are, just be conscious. Just be aware. Just arise. You see, we can decide where to put our focus. Hello. Hello. Bwana yesu asifiwe. It doesn't matter who doesn't feel here well or whatever it is the situation. It doesn't matter. Even if it's financial. Your faith operates where you direct it. Your glory is released in the area you're believing. I wanted healing, it happened. I wanted money, it would still happen. I need, if I needed someone delivered, it would still happen. Are you getting what I mean? Every darkness must bow to one name that carries glory. And that name is full of glory. Everything in heaven and at the earth and on the earth and everywhere bows to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. As we glorify this name, things will be happening. Amen. As we take this name seriously, things will be happening. Amen. Things will be changing even in our environment. Amen. Don't give up at once. You know, I prayed for a lady. She said her husband stopped coming home. Is brought another lady in her vicinity uh, where she lives. She's not in this town. Uh, and she said, Pastor, now what's still? My husband is not like he has just left and left me with the children, not paying school fees. My son is home. So many things are happening. But was still? He has not only refused to come home, but he has decided to, 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 to house the lady in the neighborhood. She says, as I go to town, I pass, I pass where they live. She says, this is hurting me so much. So I asked her, okay, so you are the legal wife. Yeah, we got married in church. What? I told her, okay. It is well. Let's pray. She said, pastor, I have prayed. You know, that's what I'm telling you. Don't give up. I have prayed. I've been prayed for. You know, she's a new person I didn't know. 
a match. She's, she, she's from somewhere. And she just, I think, was where I was ministering sometime. And she decided uh, to send, she said, we are suffering. We don't have money. We don't have anything. But she told me that I have sent something for you by Matatu. She bought something. I wondered where did this lady get money? She, they are already suffering. That thing touched me and I said, okay, it is well. Or, you know, sometimes just a touch, you can be so moved. Yeah. I said, this is the girl, the devil is playing around. She can honor people of God like this. She doesn't have anything. But yet, she kept asking, have you received? Uh, you know, one thing is that I didn't have much time. So when I sent somebody, they said they can't find it. From there, I, I went on a safari, so it took another uh, days. So finally I got, but before this, listen, now she says my husband is out. He's not here. He's not coming home. My young girl cried after him one time. God went looking for him. So he appeared in January just to cool down the girl and disappeared. She said, he doesn't communicate, he's blocked them, nothing. I said, let's pray. Now, you know, there's a time you are moved also. So we, I prayed, prayed again, as she, because she kept saying that, it's like in her heart, it's like, pastor, if it's just prayer, will it work? I have done it. I've been prayed for. I fasted. I've done everything. Dear brethren, I told this lady, every prayer you did has brought you to this point. Now we are in a different and a better position. Amen. Amen. Never give up on praying. Amen. How did we meet? Amen. God sometimes through your prayers leads you to a prophet who could be carrying a declaration. Amen. Maybe that's what you need next level. Amen. But if you didn't pray, that way would not have been paved. That's why when people pray in a region, sometimes God sends a prophet. Yes. Because prophets change seasons. Yes. Amen. Make decrees. Yes. Make declarations. They may not even need to pray much. Yes. So anybody here saying that I have prayed, Pastor, I prayed. I didn't see the result. Who told you? Who told you when the result would be, first of all? You prayed and you don't believe that it is already happening. That's why we are both things. The Bible says when you pray, believe that you have received and then it shall be yours. It doesn't become yours before you believe. If you believe, believe, believe. Yes. Believe and believe, believe. Yes. We don't walk by sight, but we walk by. So, I prayed and I forgot. Uh, the following day... <laughs> Uh, she called, she called, uh, and she told me, uh, can I talk, I told her I can't talk now, I was in a meeting. Then she sends me a message and says, my husband came home, lakini hakuacha. <laughs> For me, I was shocked. I'm like, he came. She said he came, and I don't know how he came. He just came. I said, that's not a miracle. We just prayed yesterday. Came. Said he came. Good. Don't you see there's something that happened? You said he doesn't even step there. He doesn't call. You, don't you think there's something that happened? You. How did he come? Then I was just speaking to her. I spoke to her and I said, you, you, you need to have some faith. You should have rejoiced first of all. And told me, well, I don't know how the man came, but he came. Yes, it's God who compelled him. to. How did he come to your house? Some he doesn't want to see you and he came. He doesn't want to step in your home and he came. Are you getting what I mean? Yes. 
It doesn't matter. We were praying on phone, of course. It's not even physical prayer. It was on phone. And I know eh, the glory of God always drives out darkness. Yes. And so we speak on phone now. She called again uh, later, just a few days. And after. And so as we speak, she says he doesn't talk on his phone. Uh, when he comes to sleep, he just sleeps. I say, so he sleeps in your bed? <laughs> or you sleep in different rooms? So it's the same bed. I'm like, so how has it been? She said, he's just sleeping here. Every day. Does he eat your food? Very well. I told her, listen, it's just a matter of moment. It won't be boo boo. <laughs> mm. mm. There's something that brought him, something that came. And that is not something, it's God who hit him back into his house. How blessed it is for the children to see him leaving the bedroom in the morning. One child has been having ulcers, the boy. Because he, he met his son, his father on the way, the father was driving. And the boy tried to greet the father. The father looked at the boy and passed him. She said, from then, the boy went into real depression. And, you know, now, whether he talks or not, he's home. Are you getting what I mean? This, we don't, what, why am I giving you this testimony? People give up quickly. People don't use, they do, and they don't see the complete manifestation at once. They don't see the signs and the manifestation that God is giving them as a miracle. It's all the miracle. As you move from one step to another, you'll see everything. Otherwise, you can chase away even your own miracle because you are expecting something. Hello? Everything will come. The first thing is that the person is there. Telling me that I just... Huh? So, what are we saying? The earth is full of his glory. And the earth is not only full of his glory, but the next thing I want to talk about, to mention, is... For us to overcome evil days, we must also have the knowledge of his glory. Amen? Let's look at Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. The knowledge. Knowledge is power. Amen? Amen? We said we become aware, we, 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 we arise, shine, because the glory is there and we know it. The Bible says that in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The earth shall be filled. If it is this time that we need the knowledge of his glory, this is the time. Hey, if there is a time in life when darkness is threatening and we need the glory. If there's a time we need the knowledge of his glory, this is the season. Amen. Because the word of God tells us that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. So there is a knowledge, a kind of knowledge of his own glory that you need. Hallelujah. When you have knowledge, you'll walk in the glory. Amen. When you know his word, how does the knowledge of his glory come? You must know his word. You must know his word. Amen. Number one, you must know his word. Amen. So number two, I told you, it's the knowledge of his glory that brings you to the place of overcoming in the evil days. So what do we mean by that? It means that the word of God will, must be with you. Amen. The word of God must be our, be our friend. Amen. The word of God, the presence of God helps us to learn him, to know him, how he operates. So the word, the presence, 
And for the presence to be there, we must create an atmosphere. Hello? We also need to listen to anointed teachings. Not only read the word, but also listen. The anointed teachings, all of them. But not all. That's the challenge. If you just gullibly take in everything, you can also have another counterfeit glory by listening to a wrong man or a wrong woman of God. Or not of God, of course. Of who? Whatever, whoever. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Ezekiel chapter um, 2 verse 1. You see why we need to listen to the to, to anointed servants of God whom we know. And sometimes you go back and listen again to a message. It's because the Bible says, and he said to me, verse 1, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1, and he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Then next, then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me. And set me on my feet, and I had him who spoke to me. So, any inspired message of God, anointed is his voice. Amen. The servants of God who are speaking are just speaking from him. I, they are, they, God is not coming here physically. He's using his servants. Any servants of God who is speaking the word of God, anointed teachings, Every anointing, even if it is for, for Kenneth Hagin, I don't know who, Lester Samro, whoever anointed, if you listen now, the spirit will enter you. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. And if the spirit entered you in a certain measure, let me tell you, as you go back to anything you feel bad and to listen to again and again, what happens is that the spirit will continue entering you. The glory will increase. The glory will increase. The glory will increase. Hallelujah. So today we hear his voice through the word of God when we read. Then we also hear his voice through anointed teachings. Okay. I want us to, I want to go to, 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 to the uh, third thing. I've said the knowledge. I've said arise. Praise the Lord. Now, the third thing that will help you to overcome in these evil days is knowing the will of God. Knowing. You can't be everywhere. You can't be with everybody. You can't do anything. You must do things and everything must be according to his will. Hello. We must know the will of God because in these days we need to know that his will is very, very vital. And how do we know the will of God until, unless we are filled with the Holy Spirit? When we know the will of God, what we are doing is that we are redeeming the times. The times we have lost in our times, in our days, in our season. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 tells us redeeming the time because the doors are evil. Do not be, let's look at the previous verse. Therefore, do not be what? My friend, those who have decided to be unwise in these seasons will suffer. Say, God, have mercy on me. And it's not just any wisdom. It's the wisdom of God. To know the will of God for your life. Very vital right now. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Hey, that's the way you redeem the, 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 the time. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We have no choice. 
Look at your neighbor and tell them the way anaka ni kama tizi vitu ni vya watu wengine. Anaona kama ninaongea na watu wengine. Religion has made us think so. We are not here on a religious. You are wasting God's resources and time. If you are just seated here religiously. Yeah? Hello? Somebody, you know, tell them. Usikai vivi. Do not be unwise. Yeah, you are on this side. And all these things we are talking about, they are about to happen. Things are happening. Things are happening. Things are changing. Amen? Amen. Like the other day, I saw uh, something in news that uh, I think in America alone, by 20, what? Is it 2030? They are saying over 300,000 people will lose their jobs. Why? Because of AI. Robots will be serving people. You need coffee or... <laughs> Hello? Hello? If robots will be teaching children, what, what? And it's programmed. Your children are in a class with a machine. And the school says we prefer robots. Walimu tumetoka now. Any question the robot is asked, just like Siri, which the, 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 the students say, which, which, which mountain in geography, where is it? The robot says, the mountain is very quickly, more efficient. <laughs> Hello. Let me tell you, after 2030, what matters is whether you have wealth. I'm telling you blank. Am I making you anxious? No. But listen, it's not wealth per se. Everything follows the will of God. One as far as if you will. If you know the will of God now, I'm telling you, you'll be positioned. They will still need you. You, they will need you. <laughs> if you are positioned in your Goshen, and you have discovered your Goshen, your purpose, your will, the will of God, for, and you start following the Holy Ghost for his will. Hello. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is no time, if you are preparing yourself now and arising and redeeming time now, that you will not be needed in this world. Joseph was needed at the most crucial time. It doesn't matter the times you will be needed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say me. I know the will of God. I'll be needed. So the next verse says, uh, the, the previous verse says, but, and do not, what is it, redeeming? Which one is that? The one you went to before you moved. No, no. Give me 16. Give me 16. Hey. It says, redeeming the time. How do you redeem the time? If you know the will of God, whenever you fit in the will of God, you'll redeem time. I'm telling you, if there's something you need, this is and God is not far. The Holy Spirit is not far. It's just to ask him, align me. I need your will. I need where I need to be next. You may be living in a wrong location. Angels are coming. Delivering things in the wrong location. But when you align, then... The angels that are delivering your resources in the right location, that location will find you. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is a redeemer. Amen. He is a kinsman redeemer. Amen. Hey, he can redeem what we have lost. Amen. He says the ears, the locusts have eaten, the canker worms, the caterpillars, and all kinds of worms. He shall restore back to us. Amen. There is restoration in God. He is not limited by time. He can go to the past. He can come to the present. He can go to the future. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. God can redeem anybody. God can redeem any person. That's why in the days that are evil, know the will of God. Why? Redeem. In evil days, you redeem. You don't walk like every other day. You redeem. Woo. Don't waste time. That's what you have been told. 
Don't waste time. Don't waste. Don't waste. You are wasting life. <coughs> While a child of 11 years, <coughs> I listened to a boy, a young man of a billionaire of 24, 20, it's 23, 24 now. This boy, he's talking about things, how he manages time. He said, What has brought a lot of success to him is managing and planning his time. Not born again at all. So, when we waste time, we may sit there and say, I am 20. 20 years are doing exploits. 19 are doing 17. My friend, let that mental block be broken. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord help somebody. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Redeeming the time because the day. Why? So that evil does not come upon you. Listen. If somebody, the day that on the 40th day, uh, that Noah was building the ark and he was pleading with people come into there. Oh, repent, repent. God wants to save the whole world. Oh, the, the ark is being built. They are just watching, they are just watching, they are just what they could hear. One day is coming, a day is coming when everybody will die. Ah, they are just watching. If they made, even if they made the, their minds when it is raining, maybe on the 38th day of the rain, you think they can be redeemed? No, it was late. That's why you redeem time. It was late. They are already dead. Who can survive in pounding rain of 38 days? What if they change their mind in hell? They are already dead. What if they started saying, I wish on day 35 if they were alive? Who, how many people can survive in that level of pounding rain? In other words, what I'm telling you is even if they decide they didn't die in day 5, and they said, where is Noah? The ark is already moving. It's closed. It's already going up. Will they find it? They are swimming towards it. Will they survive? That's why we are told, redeem. Don't wake up then. Wake up now. Redeem the time. Because the days are evil. Hallelujah. And the next verse, 18. Very important. Therefore, Listen. Therefore, do not be unwise. I mean, no. Verse 18. And do not, listen, after knowing the will of God, what the Bible tells you. You know, you need to know the context, what is happening. You see, know the will of God. Okay? Redeem time. Praise the name of Jesus. And then the next verse is, and do not be drunk with wine. In which is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because why? Nobody can do the will of God without being filled. With the Holy Spirit. Nobody. Be filled. So, in the seasons that darkness, are, darkness is threatening. And these are called evil days. And we must overcome. We must be filled. And refilled. Every moment is filled. Why? Because when you are filled, why will you be filled with the Holy Spirit? When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you, 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 you become sharp in doing what you are meant to do. Let's look at Acts chapter 6 verse 3 quickly. I want a few verses, just reading, reading very quickly. Acts chapter 6 verse 3. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven Men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. You get what I mean? No, give me the same, the same, the same verse. Therefore, what was happening here? They needed to concentrate on the work of God. 
And they say it because there is an issue, a business to be taken care of in the house of the Lord. Listen, they are saying we may appoint some people over this business. The house of the Lord has a lot of business. Praise the name of Jesus. They needed to take care of the widow, many things. But they are, everybody has their place. But you can't know without the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Why do we need men who are full of the Holy Spirit? It's because men who are full of the Holy Spirit will do the right work. Full of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will guide them. Give us men who are full of the Holy Spirit. Why? Seven men of good reputation. Give me King James. Let me see in King James. Hey, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, you, you seven. Look, look is look. Hello. When people, when servants of God choose or they start doing investigation, somebody will be, will be wondering, why are they choosing so and so? Isn't that so? See, look is look. Look among you. Seven men of honest report. Somebody who is so dishonest, you can already see your ways are not right. Ukona, ukora, ukora. Alafu unasema ujachaguliwa. Honest ni na full of the Holy Spirit wana ingiliana wapi. Sisi, tumeambiwa, we look. Hello? Pastor Vicky, we look. Praise the name of Jesus. Is there a honest report? Has this person been in a department with somebody? And do they have a good report? Are we getting a good report? So reports are usually gotten from people. Reports are not, it's not like pastor standing there checking out whether you are honest, whether you are sincere, whether you are committed to the ministry. No! I got them from the people you work with. Is this person honest? Is this person, does this person have a good report? Then after this, imagine that is so important that it comes first. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Do you see how important your actions are? Some of us don't think character is anything. Character is everything. You can't be employed. If us in church, we are told to look, how much will, more will the people outside there be looking? Since we have the Holy Spirit, but yet we have been told, look among you, please, angalia vizuri. Wale, wale wako committed. Wale wako honest. Wale hawachelewi. Wale wakipewa task, they honestly do it. I want fitina nyingi kokanisa. Good report is important character. And then, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom of God. Hallelujah. These ones will do the right business. Whom we may appoint over this business. The problem with many people right now is appointing wrong people. If you are led by the Spirit of God, you can't appoint wrong people. Have mercy on us, oh God. We will know the will of God for that business. Somebody has business and has put somebody who in, the, in, in one man, instead of profit, is losses. Why? If that person is not supposed to be appointed over that business. Hello? The Holy Spirit will help you in your business. The Holy Spirit can help you in your business. Yeah. Do you have a project? The Holy Spirit from this moment, be a friend, be, you know, he will help you in your business. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why do we need to have the Holy Spirit full? The other reason is we need also to uh, to have spiritual revelation. Acts chapter 7 verse 55 quickly. The Bible says, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Why? Because he was full of? He was full of? Heavens? 
open. Revelation come when you are full of the Holy Spirit. Dreams come, visions come. Hey, somebody say, I need the Holy Ghost. I really need to be filled again. If you are filled, you will know the will of God. And the Bible tells us that when we pray according to his will, he shall hear, he will hear us. And he will give us the petition or whatever we have asked him. He will give us. Because we are prayed according to the will of God. And you can't know the will of God without the Holy Spirit. Do not be drunk with wine. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. One is was if you one S was if you one S was if you I just want to give I I don't know whether I'll give one I'll see how do we get filled? How now what how do we stay with the Holy Spirit? Many of us have been getting filled, isn't it? But do we stay with the Holy Spirit? We don't. The next Sunday, maybe we are we are much less. The Bible says, be, be filled. Be continually. Hello? Hello? The best way to stay connected and to continually, one aspect that I want to give you is one by one is called consecration. Somebody say consecration. The Holy Spirit loves that we consecrate. Okay? The Holy Spirit loves that we are set apart. That way, the Spirit of God will always be with us. Consecration is in many ways. It could be that the Holy Spirit would want you to pray at a certain time. It could be he wants you to help the poor. That's also a consecration, any form of consecration. But also, avoiding things. For example... In that scripture, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, listen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, the, spirit, the Bible tells us, and do not be drunk with wine, in which there is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen? Praise the Lord. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, let's look at it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. Uh, okay, let's see. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Let's go to the previous one. Previous verse, verse 4. Be anxious for nothing. Let's go to verse uh, 5, 6. Um, what did I say? Verse 4. I'm looking for something. Rejoice in the Lord again. I say rejoice. And then, next verse. Let your gentleness be known. No. Give me a different version. Give me King James. Of the same verse. Hallelujah. It says, let your moderation be known. And to all men, the Lord is at hand. What does that mean? Moderation is mean moderate. When God wants you consecrated, what he means is that you must walk in moderation. He doesn't like excess. The Holy Spirit will leave you whenever you are in excess. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. With whom? You have been what? Sealed. For the day of? Yeah? Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the Bible says, us, let your moderation be known to all and to all men, the Lord is at hand. It means, do not be drunk with wine in which there is excess. I think there's a version that says excess. That's what I was looking for. Do not be drunk with wine. Is, it, is the issue here about wine? There's a version that says, do not be not dissipation, but this, this English also is interesting. Yeah, King James. Today I'm on King James, the original one. One And do not be drunk with wine. Where, where in is excess. But be filled with the spirit. Excess. 
The Holy Spirit, be filled. Don't be in excess. Does that, that mean that don't drink too much? No. Hello? Because God knows that you don't need alcohol for anything. Okay? And that excess is the emphasis. Facebook can be excess, my friend. You are drunk with the Facebook, five years are gone, five, five hours are gone. Children were supposed to be picked from school. Unastukia haya was on social media. Nisangabi? Sangabi? Excess. Let your moderation be known to all men. Excess. Some people took, talk excessively, isn't it? Oh, you Holy Spirit, Appendi. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Excess. Mwai skia umekana mtu ameongea sana mpaka umeke. Na si neno. Kama ni neno inakufufua. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mtu ameongea mpaka next time ukimwona ametokezea huko anasema unasema na roho mtakatifu kama wewe ni mwanadamu. Anashanga huyu anyamazi ni redio ya wapi? Anyone who is filled with the Holy Spirit, do not always talk too much. Do not, because you are led. If you are just, you know, freestyle. When you kutembea tu, kila mahali. Because now, you, you, you are not even aware of the Holy Spirit. You, was, well, you are not conscious. You are not being led by the Spirit of God. You are not being filled. Even the feeling, unazitoa tu, by Tuesday, akuna kitu. Misha, office, yeah. <laughs> we candy. It's from one desk to another. Hey, we candy, Angu. Everybody was on a weekend. Go and speak something which is meaningful. Have moderation. Is that wrong? Saying hi to some friends, yes. But the whole office, my friend. Paka boss anafunga mlango anasema hata anakuja kwangu. <laughs> Sina time. Everything excess. Excess TV. Netflix. Umeangalia hii. Unajua everything ni wine. Iko na ulevi. Why are the Bible refusing that we drink wine? Kwa sababu gani? Na wengine wataniambia oh uh, Timothy aliambiwa kama uko na shida ya tumbo. Sikiza, hakukua na madawa kama ya leo. Na si hii wine. Spirit. Inaitwa hata spirit. Hello. Unaenda hospitali. Tumbo ikisokota kama utaki kuja maombi. Anything can be wine. Hello. One has was if you anything can be wine. Do you know that? Mwangale mwenzako mwambie yako na kwa gag. Aina gan. Which brand? Is your brand? Unajua everything, even negative things are. are Kuna wale mutu ameka hivi. Five hours. Anafikiria shida zake. That's excess. You are not talking to anybody. It's excess. You are not praying. The only place Jaona is says ni maombi. Because why? Bibili ata maombi pia lazima tuangalie kiasi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kuna watu wameitumia kama religion, ni kama tu tu hapana. Of course we have been told to pray always. But hata hiyo kuna wale wameishi kwa chaji. Na wako na familia. Hata kwa maombi, one man, mama ameolewa. Kama Mungu amesema once in a while ndio, lakini every month nikikuona my friend. Go back to your husband. Suletewa hapa, divorce ndo tuanza kuomba tena. Ex 
excess. Excess. Do you love somebody excessively? It's wrong. Have you ever seen girls who suddenly got a, a boyfriend? Nobody can rest around some of them. It's as if somebody from heaven has been dropped here. Mwambia tulia dada. Watu wote walikuwa nasikia tu hivi. Ama ndugu. Hello. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Baka mukianza kuishi pamoja siku zingine hata mnasahau kwamba you are in the house. So just relax. Don't have excess. Don't grieve for too long. That's excess. Don't be sad forever. That's excess. Don't hold on to your past forever. It's excess will hinder your in feeling of the Holy Ghost. You won't walk with the Spirit of God. No excess. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Watch your excess. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Even in marriage, let me show you one, one scripture. Hata kwa marriage, hakuna excess. Ukita, mukitaka kukua married na bado munakaa na roho mtakatifu, awacha excess. Hallelujah. Let's look at 5 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. The Bible tells us, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passes away. Are we, not, are we told not to use the world? The world is there to be used. AI, I don't care what anybody thinks. Me, I'm trying to, if you know how to teach that thing, come and teach me. Please, I need it. Those who use what? I don't care where any knowledge has come from. If it is going to affect me soon. Listen. One thing I know is that all perfect and good gifts are from above. Amen. From the father of lights. Amen. Who it landed on, I don't know. It depends on how they use it. But when it comes to me, I know how to use it. Whether it is social media, whether it is money, whether it is anything of this world. The Bible tells us, and they that, that use. Are we not supposed to use things in the world? As not abusing it, not excessively. Kama ni make up unaka kama. Hi. Make yourself up. We prefer, we like it. Dress well. Use the world. Use what they have made. Use high heels. Mimi ni vile tu sasa mkisimama sana na choka. Use. But not abusing. Usitulete earring. Hi. Imeka. Huh? Paka tunakuangalia tunashangaa kuna shimo imebaki hapa kwa hii. No. Ama unatuletea nini? I don't know. Ring. Hone sukileta ring sina shida watu wakitoboa toboa vitu lakini ukiniletea kama cow ring. Me the only thing I know ni ile ring ya ya, ya ngombe. To identify. You're not a cow. That's excess. But if you have some rings, I mean, we may, we may to borrow something, even me, I have, we don't have an issue. But if you are using this world, the Bible says, don't abuse it. Yes. Not abusing it, use it, but don't abuse it. Don't abuse it. Yes. Don't abuse clothes. Clothes are meant to cover. Usikate material, mpaka imekuwa short sana. Umei abuse, isu zingine tenda hapi. Hello? As not abusing it. S somebody is wondering how is it related to the Holy Spirit. It's very related. Very related. It's the word of God I'm bringing you. Excesses are not allowed. Excesses are not allowed. Praise the Lord. If you, how will you not grieve the Holy Spirit? If you go on social media and what you are doing is grieving the Holy Spirit. You are excess. Use the world. But don't abuse it. You are the one insulting people on social media. You are the one posting things that are obnoxious. What is it that you are doing on that social media? You are abusing it. Use it. The Bible tells you. But don't abuse it. Money, use it. Well, eh, 
Eh? Unajua kuna watu extreme, excessive. Kuna wakati tuliambiwa earring ni kama unatolewa church. Si, si kuna siku zozo za ukikuja church umepaka. You are the sister of the devil. No. There are people who are all covered. But they don't have the Holy Spirit. Hello? Because they are also in excess. In religion. Where they have another spirit. But they don't have the Holy Spirit. They are not full. Because even their own character is hateful. Vile watakufukuza hiyo kanisa. Ati. Amepaka nini? I penso. And it's not excess. Ati umekuja na hearing. Oh, umekuja. No, all these things we are told to stay moderate. Amen. Don't be in any extreme. Amen. The Holy Spirit mutachana. Extremities mumenda. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Listen. Let's go to the next verse. I want to Makatosa Raba Korea. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord. How he may please the Lord. Okay. The Bible tells us there are people going married. Paul actually was advising that people should not get married. But he said if you, <laughs> in case you why? He says, those who are unmarried care for the things that belong to the law. But how many unmarried things are, uh, married people are running from one church to another looking for a husband? Not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Pleasing the Lord when? Or a, a, a wife. Kanisa ni kiangalia hivi. Hakuna potential. pleasing the Lord or running after. Let me tell you, you are already out of the will and out of the Holy Spirit. Utapata muto atumjui. Ata dunia inashangali toka wapi. Because you are looking for physical, physical things. Hello? The Bible recommends that those who are not married, that it is even better for them. Because why? They will please the Lord. More than the ones who are married. So you find that there are people who are married. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't marry. The, he's just trying to emphasize that if you are married, stay as if you are not. And those who are married, stay as if you are. Why? Because nevertheless, the person to be pleased at the end of the day is the Lord. Amen. Be moderate. Amen. Even in your marriage. If you are not married, take this golden opportunity to please the Lord. Because as you please the Lord and you are concentrated on the Lord, you, you are in his will and he will bring the person. This thing of jumping, in fact, when we were not married, some years ago, people said, hey, mini vile munaka. He married, sioni ka mtaona. Kwa uliza ni hii kanisa, hata we mwenye unangalia, unaona. Tukambio tembea, tembea. Angalia, angalia. Some of us decided, no. Let's just go on doing what the Lord wants us to do. I was in missions and all this. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And in the same field, just like the way Boaz met Ruth in the field. I was in the field for my master. Hallelujah. The Boaz appeared. Boaz will only be in the field. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. So, okay, I, I excuse Teddy. So, so it's not many, everybody should not be turning. One else was if you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Moderate. He says, please the Lord. Are you single? What shall he be, my friend? He kitu itakuletea watu atuelewi. Watu ametengenezo na AI. Half human, half alien. <laughs> we can't handle such guys. We can't handle such girls. So please spare us. Please the Lord. Amen. Take this moment. Hallelujah. Go to your field. Amen. Find out the will of God. 
the mind of God. And for us who are married, in fact, let me, I think it's the next verse which says, <laughs> but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Is that wrong to please his wife? Yes, men have been told to please their wives. Is, is, is he, is he counseling, I mean, saying that people should not please their wives? Yes, you should please their wife also. But not to an extent that, I, Kila Siku, my wife, she has become an idol. Hmm? Hey, I have to run home, my wife. I need to, I, I, no, 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 no. I can't do my wife. Huh? And the wife on the other side, the Bible says that she should please, she will please her husband. Yes, pleasing one another is recommended in the Bible. Actually, that's why Paul was saying that tension is this distraction, a bit of distraction for the married. And he says it's better that you even stay without getting because you'll have full attention on the Lord. But he says still if you are married, yeah, it's okay. But you see, you'll have to divide your attention because there's a time you have to please. The Bible doesn't say that you displease your husband at the expense of pleasing the Lord, isn't it? Excess. Somebody say excess. excess. How many people, another man said that his wife nowadays is just moving with, we went to certain county with my husband and, and the husband, you know, spoke to us and said we are having a problem. My, my wife, since she became very spiritual, every month she's traveling. There's a prophet somewhere. If he has a meeting in Homer Bay, my wife is there. They are the ones who go there ahead. One full month. Praying. He says she comes home, only changes, and all this says now it is Kitale. He says, I have a problem. I don't know what to do. We married in church. I don't know whether to marry another one. We saw his trouble. Are you getting what I mean? Yes. Isn't that excess, really? Yes. Is that the Holy Spirit? No. The Holy Spirit says moderation. When Samson, mother, in, in Judges chapter 13, verse 4, was supposed to be born, the, Samson was supposed to be born, there's something about alcohol, I think. The Bible says, now, therefore, beware. This is the angel speaking to her. Pray thee, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Next. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God, from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Why? He came for a special purpose. The boy. And what is the mother told? Don't drink. No wine should touch. No strong drink, nor wine. Walo anasema tumeruusiwa na Bible. Waneswa sifiwi. It was her concentration. So people think that it was only Samson's hair where it was consecrated. No. The mother was also consecrated before she bore him. She was told in this season, no wine, nothing, and no razor. These are things in your power. Should touch this boy. It's a consecration. For him to have the same level of anointing and glory, the same power of the Holy Spirit without reducing Without it being affected, he must stay in full consecration. And he shall be a Nazarite. When he was born, he was told when he was of age, don't cut your hair. This is your consecration. This is where your power lies. Every consecration carries power, carries the Holy Spirit. Whenever you separate yourself from the world, from many things, from many excesses, that way you have declared, I want to increase, and you shall increase in the Holy Spirit. That's not all. We have other points. Amen? Today, I want you to know that if there are areas you are struggling, yeah, in excess, 
Excess. Excess tea. Excess food. Kwanza food. Have you ever seen people who can eat? Everything on the table is not to be eaten. Honestly, it's a problem for people. They eat for comfort. Bring it to the Holy Spirit. Listen, you eat for... There are many who eat for comfort when they are stressed. Or maybe they have woundedness in their soul. Are you getting what I mean? There has been trauma that they have been living with. And the only way they can number the pain is by eating. That's why you see some women after stressful bad and a stressful marriage and what? They just start increasing. Why? Because they can't control their shopping. Some is shopping. It's addiction. Excessive. Excessive. Mayona unapita any shop ukiona kitu orange. Ha bloom. Umeingia tu ata ujumi guili kuingiza haje hapo. Na mtu mtu anasema si ulinunua last week. Kuwa kada. Unasema pana hii hii umeiona wewe hui. Excess. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Every excess is a, an addiction. Every excess is a cycle. Are you excessively sad? Are people telling you that? Kwani hauna wakati wa kufurahi wewe? Are you excessively down? These are the things to bring to the Holy Spirit. It's affecting your walk with the Holy Spirit. You are staying filled to know the will of God. And in this day, this is the way we can overcome evil. Evil days. The Bible doesn't talk about at whether there will be evil days. No. The Bible tells us that, uh, that when the evil days come. Look at, it, at uh, mm, oh, is it in, in Ephesians chapter 6 when the Bible says that and stand therefore. Eh? When the evil days come. In chapter 6. Stand. When? It doesn't tell you if. And especially we are in the last days. The evil days are there. Hello. But if the evil days you and meets you unprepared, that's why the whole armor, those ones will go into. In the next, today I'm speaking about consecration mainly. Staying in the Holy Spirit. To know the will of God. To know the mind of God. Then we redeem time. Then we redeem time. So, just anything in any area. If you are wounded and you are using food, you are using shopping, you are using alcohol, you are using what? Maybe you don't even know that you have had trauma, you have had wounds, you have had issues, and the devil has taken advantage of that and you are in addiction. Bring it to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says do not be drunk with any of those things I've mentioned. Because drinking, every drinking, the root is, is what? The root is, is of addiction is, is something in the soul. Every addiction, you will root it to the soul of a man. Is there that something happened in your life at one point? That the pain was too much. And you didn't even know that it was too much. Then you found yourself you are sleeping too much. That is your alcohol. You are depressed too much. That's your wine. You are thinking too much. You are worried too much. You are never happy. What is your addiction? Some people say, I mimi chai, kichwa na nyuma. You are an addict. Mulevi. <laughs> Anything excess until now you can't control. You are an addict. Are you? So, there are only two things. The, the, the Bible tells us to choose between addiction, Holy Spirit. That's why I'm talking about it. Wine, strong, strong, strong drink, and the Holy Spirit. Do not be drunk with wine or any strong drink, but be, be filled 
So the, the, thing, the thing is only two. The, the, the kind of addiction you can have are only two. It's either addiction to anything. Wine is just an example. Or you choose the Holy Spirit. It's this one or that one. It doesn't work together. Are you understanding me? Yes. Is there some you don't even know that you're addicted? Let the Holy Spirit show you. Could, you could be addicted to something and you're not aware. You don't even think it's an addiction. You, you think it is just watching one movie and after another. You, you think it's just eating. Kwentu tunakula. Mwili na jengwa na. Sina mawe. To kure. If you are kalenjin, what will you say? If you are lua, I just, I've, just, uh, I've just done for the kikuyu. Eh? Bwana eswa sifiwe. Praise the Lord. Listen. Listen. It's not right. Because why? It's dangerous. Every addiction. Have you seen any mulevi akiing the excess? Si lazima jisahau. Si aneza ata uwawa. Is in the will of God. Mutu akikula sana. Si anaka kama paidon. Yule amemeza kitu. Aneza move usiku. Paka digestion yote ishe. Ata wamuka ombe. Si kama ni bad dream ama papepo na witches wamekuja, wanampata tu kwa bed. Ataeza move. Kama ni kumnyonga, wanamnyonga, wanae? Usikule kama paito. Bring it to the Lord. If every moment, there is a level, ata kama usiki, kama umeshiba. Kwa sababu umeweka, hiyo tumbo imekuwa na kapa. Siti kubwa. Na chakula hiko. Halo. Bwana esu asifiwe. Anza kujifunza useme. Kuna maji. Jaza na maji. Enda uombe. Halo. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to talk to the Holy Spirit. Today we are serious. We can't be filled, filled, filled. Uh, we don't carry the glory. No. By Monday, social media, menda na yoyote. Pana. We don't want. Anything you feel you are being comforted with, which is excess. The world is to be used, but not abused. Bow your head and speak to the Lord. I give you a moment to speak. Let him check excesses. You need to be filled today. Refilled. Redeem the time. The days are evil. Darkness covers the earth. If you are carrying the glory of God, the Bible says that when you walk, you, when you, you know the water, when you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you. Nothing. Because you are in his will. And you can't know his will unless you are full of the Holy Spirit. I give you opportunity to speak to him. He's here. What is it that we have made our friend other than the Holy Spirit? Is it laziness? Is it sleep? Is it worry? Is it Netflix? Is it TV? Or combination of so many things we you do the whole day that we don't have time for the Holy Spirit, even be conscious of Him. So we'll be messing up. Not in the will of God any moment. Yet when we are in the will, we shall redeem this time. God makes sure that what we lost comes back. Holy Spirit, take your place. Tasha, come and help us with one worship as the people pray.
God will deliver you from every addiction. Whatever has hindered consecration in your life will be taken away. Whatever has been competing with the Holy Spirit in your life, just connect with him and talk to him. Let us become 
Say this after me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Every time I grieved you. Every time I grieve you. Forgive me. Forgive me. Take away. Take away. Spirit of God. Spirit. Of Reveal God. to me. Reveal to me. Take away. Take away. Every excess. Every excess. That is hindering. That is hindering. Your operations in my life. Your operation in my life. Take away. Take away. Feel my life. Feel my life. Help me. Help me. That my time be redeemed. That my time be redeemed. Lost times. Lost times. You are my helper. You are my, helper. You are my counselor. You are my counselor. Help me walk with you now. Help me walk with you now. For redemption. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Help me today. Help me today. Help me today. Help me today. Just talk to him. Spirit of the sovereign God. Come and make your presence known reveal. The glory of the risen King. Spirit of the sovereign God come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the reason let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory fall. You see, sometimes we limit Let God. The of there are glory. many of us. The Holy Spirit is about being in the church. The but today he wants us to graduate. To walk with him everywhere, every moment. Because he wants to do something. He wants to align us and help us to overcome evil days. And stay on top. Even in those kind of days. I want you to start renouncing. Say, Holy Spirit, I renounce every addiction in my life. I break friendship. I break agreement. I detach myself. The ones I know, the ones I do not know, as you continue revealing, I detach, I break. I disconnect. I delink myself from this moment onwards. Help me be separated. Be separated. Be separated. Be separated from everything. And to you, be consecrated. And to you. Just ask him to help you. It's easier said done than done. Yes, you have declared. Let him help you. We are in the world to use it. But sometimes we are in excess. We are in excess. Excess pleasure. Excess world. Excess God. No, it can't work together. As others are praying. If there's anything you are struggling with in excess, which you know you have tried to overcome, has not been possible. Anointing breaks the yokes. As the worship is going on, I want you to walk here. I want to pray for you. 
any excess. You are praying. It's not broken. Whether it's sleeping, whether it's what, you are using that. Just come. It's giving you comfort. You can't do without. As you come here, release it to the Holy Ghost. I want to disconnect you from excesses. Is it your children? Some people always, everything about their life is my children, my children. Until God says, if you love them more than me, just take care of them then. What is it that you are so excessively obsessed? Is it your work? Lift up your hand once you are here and talk to the Holy Spirit. Today I decree this connection. Let the anointing of God break yokes of addiction, yokes of connection, yokes of access, whether it's talking, whether it's eating, whether it is obsession with our families, obsession with our country, obsession or with even prayer, spiritual things. We are escaping something. It's not like we want to pray. It's because we find comfort in it. It's not the Holy Spirit leading us to pray. We find comfort. Anything we are hiding in to avoid pain, to avoid facing our problems, it's an addiction. It doesn't matter what. Let the weight of your glory. Thank you, Let Jesus. The weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory. Renounce that thing here. As you are talking to the Holy Spirit, renounce it. Let the weight Today you will be disconnected Lord and you will be filled. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let the weight of your glory. Father, I agree with her. Every Let excess the in her life. Of your glory. Spirit of the sovereign Lord. Father, I agree with her. Come and Every excess in your life. Glory. I break that power and disconnect you. The glory I cast it out. Whatever has become an object, Spirit an addiction. The sovereign God, come and make your presence known. Loose the glory I lose you the from everything that is competing with the Holy Spirit in your life. Spirit of the sovereign God, come and make your presence known. The glory of the living disconnection. Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence revealed. The glory of the living God. Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence fire. Lord, reveal fire. the glory fire, of the fire, risen God. King ah. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord come and make your presence so reveal the glory of the risen King and the weight of your glory Holy Spirit. And the weight of your glory. 
under the weight of your glory. Whatever it is, I deliver the weight of your glory. Okay. Under the weight of your glory. Whatever it is, Makatos Bakaya Bayade. The weight of your glory yes. fall. Oh. The weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory. Hello. 
glory Let the weight of your glory Let the weight of your glory fall Let the weight of your glory Let the weight of your glory fall We worship you, Lord. You are my strength, Lord. You are our strength. You are our strength, Lord. You are our strength, Lord. You are my strength, Lord. You are my strength, Lord. Lord. Oh, 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 oh. You are my strength when I am weak. You are my treasure that I seek. You are my only no. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up our beautiful. You are my only in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, what is your name? Jesus, Lamb. To give up, I'll be a fool. You are my only.
the Holy Spirit. Ask him to refill you. Ask him. Pray even if it's in tongues. This is your moment of being refilled. Desperate for him, be filled. Follow ah. me. To be led of him from now to a life. The, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Follow Just me. Pray. Just pray for him to be filled. Follow me. Of redemption, follow me, Jesus. I thank you.
I can see some of you, <clears throat> you are under severe power of the Holy Ghost. Okay, lift up your hand. Ripa! One. I want you to receive. Some of you can't even stand. One! Receive, 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 receive. It's happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. Yes, the power of God. 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 It's a fresh release. It's a fresh release. It's a new release. Yes. Yes. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Take out the presence. Take out the 
advantage of the glory. Listen, some of you, your spiritual eyes are getting open. Yes, spiritual eyes, spiritual blindness, boy, spiritual deafness, boy. You start seeing, you start seeing visions, you start having dreams. Fresh anointing, follow me. Fresh anointing, follow me. Fresh anointing, follow me. Fresh anointing, follow me. Follow me, follow me, fresh anointing, follow me, fresh anointing, follow me, fresh anointing, follow me, fresh anointing, follow me. If you are unwell, check yourself. You are healed. Check yourself. Whatever there was pain, check it out. There is change. If there be internal diseases, start believing. Oppressions of every kind, financial troubles. In the glory of God, everything is possible. Connects with yours. There are powers. to him and say, I want to be aligned. I want to be in my place. I want my Goshen.
to call me your own. redemption Leo you've got times and seasons in your hands father out of darkness you don't need a man to be the God you are I sense redemption I sense that things that were not happening for years we lost opportunities I feel it that's what I want to connect you to. He has wasted.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We honor your name for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do, even in our lives. Thank you. Just thank him for his mighty visitation, mighty, mightily being among us. Don't take him for granted. Don't ever. That's what grieves the Holy Spirit. Don't take him. We love you. Who are we, Lord, that you'd be with us? Blessed be your name. Let your presence be with us and continue with us. Continue working in our lives, Holy Spirit. Continue with us. Continue with us. Continue with us. Continue with us, Lord. Continue, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody appreciate Jesus. <coughs> Please take your blessed seats. Hallelujah. Wow. Are we not honored to have a mighty visitation? Mighty move of the Holy Spirit. We should never get used to or take the Holy Spirit for granted. Hallelujah. So, it's another time to continue worshipping Him and thanking Him. We need, you see, we need to know that we need to focus as we prepare to, to give. Don't rush into your pockets. Focus. And thank God for the harvest also. God is not a liar. It depends on your faith. He says give. And it shall be given to you. Is it not true? Good measure. The harvest is more. There's more explanation on the harvest than the giving. Are you getting me? There's more explanation on the harvest than the giving. The Bible just says, give first. Shall be given to you. That's given to you is an explanation. Good measure is an explanation. Press down is an explanation. Shaken together is an explanation. Most of us, we don't consider the harvest. Consider the harvest. One is specific. Consider the consider the harvest. Praise God. Consider what? In the glory of God, everything multiplies. So consider the harvest. There's more to the harvest. You see a lady, one of our sisters, who I don't know when she came, she, she has not even stepped here yet. And uh, she's, uh, she's been coming once in a while when we were the other side. She sent me a message and told me, Pastor, I was in the church. And we were all in the same kind of clothes. You know, they, they said it's, 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 it's a greenish, very beautiful bluish. That's why I wore this today. She described and I felt, isn't this my, my coat? Said we all were in this. She was also here and of course today she's not here. She said I had a dream. And the glory of the Lord was excessive in the service. And she said I started saying I love this church. She said even the front here, there were the same color of pillows. She said what she saw. She described until I said woo. What God wants to do in this place, I think cannot be explained. 
So I said prophetically today, because these are the green, bluish, all mixture of nice colors that you described. I already have a coat, although it's old. Let me come with it prophetically. We, God is taking us. Because he's really spoken to us about his glory, this glory, the glory, you know, increases. Don't now go and diminish the glory, no. Let it increase. Even here, let it continue. Increase, because there's something God is even showing others that the glory will really de we keep descending upon us, even more, more and more. So in the glory, everything multiplies. So remember, I want you to consider there is give, just one. But the explanation or the, the, the thing about the harvest, good measure given to you, first of all, back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, that's four. Eh? What, what else? Running over. Shall men uh -huh. give that seven into your bosom. Imagine seven emphasis on the harvest. That's why when we release our seed in the, in the glory, we can name it. Are you getting? You can connect your faith. That's why I'm talking to you. It's part of worship. You can connect your faith to your seed. You can say, because we have been taught about giving. You're not buying anything, but you're saying, as I release this, Lord, I release my faith. That this and this will happen. Don't do it carelessly. There's so much emphasis on the harvest. And what you give should also be good in the glory. Multiplication only happens because shall men give into your bosom. There is a giving that comes to you. So release your own. And you believe, go for something, make sure you release. Because God honors faith. That's why when, <clears throat> when you attach a seed to giving, what you are doing is you are releasing your faith. Honestly, why it happens is because you have attached your faith. Attach your faith to something. Because if you attach yourself faith to something like that, why it must work is because it's a prophetic action and prophetic actions can't fail. Uh, they are also called actions of faith. You can do it through your giving. Amen. Those online, use the numbers on the screen. Hallelujah. If you are writing a check, write to Christ to the Nations Outreach Ministry. I don't know whether the, the details may not be on, on the screen. But those who have an envelope, the details of the check, where to be written the account, account is on the envelope. And the Lord blesses us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are we ready in our giving? Let's obey him in everything. That's another thing. We can't talk of redemption, yet we are in disobedience. We don't want to hear him in terms of giving, in terms of releasing into the kingdom. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for every gift. Sanctify, cleanse. There is a mystery about money, giving, and all this. Help each and every one of us know the details, the knowledge. And I declare blessings over every person as they release their faith today using any seed. Lord, you who honor faith, I connect my faith to their own and I declare that God, the result, the solution has come. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. In the name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. God bless you so much. Uh, before we go offline, I want to announce to us that um, God is at work. 
uh, we are going to good seasons. We are, our resurrection Sunday is coming closer this year. It's in March. Is it in March? 31st. Is it? Hello? Yeah, and then the Passover and uh, the resurrection time are not the same this time. Passover is in April, as usual. But the resurrection Sunday has come nearer. I don't understand how it's calculated. I've always known it's together with Passover. Today, this time. So, that Good Friday, we want to do good. Somebody say good. How many of you have seen this clip that has been going on? No, 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 Marsa Beat. I don't want to go into details. Marsa Beat, uh, some religion. Have you seen a certain? We need to know what the enemy wants to do, and we must arise. We are not reactional, but we want to pray for Northern Kenya. Don't think Northern Kenya is very, you know, it's inconsequential. It's very consequential to this country. We want to come together to pray. So we'll give you details. We are trusting God to see whether we can come together by that Friday and pray for the North that the Lord would intervene. It also happens to be our Kesha time, is it? When is our, it, it must be the last Friday. Mm -hmm. So we'll give details on what will happen. As it is, there are a few days ahead of us. But our Passover conference is still there. Passover, we take Passover, that get to Passover very seriously also. So Passover conference will still be there. Uh, MBCI is coming tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow. Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. And on Thursday, 9.30 p.m. Please tune in, share with others, and let other people be encouraged. We are on TV. And uh, pray for it, too. There are some of us who said we'd pray for it. We, uh, when I see good results, it's when I say, mm, there are people praying. Hello? Amen. See, prayer are usually answered. Yes. Or you are saying, be patient, Pastor, we've just started. <laughs> yeah, let's pray and uh, let's be faithful. Let's not be unfaithful kind of people because we grieve the Holy Spirit. If we said we are praying for anything, let's pray. Even those who are saying they pray for Pastor, just be faithful. Don't make a vow if you can't fulfill it. Buenas was if you. So we thank God for that. It shall be there. And uh, Wednesdays, we are here at uh, 5.30 p.m. Holy Spirit service, please. Invite somebody to the house of the Lord. Come and be part of it. Amen. Sundays, of course, 10.30. We are in the house of God. And the intercessory service is at 9 a.m. on Sundays. And uh, then we also have the other service, which is main service. Praise God. Are you blessed today? Yes. Is God doing good to you? Yes. Um, we, we thank God. We also have, we are also grateful to God today. 